Today on Shop Nation, we do an unboxing and turn this 3D printer kit into a 3D printer. If you want to know what goes into building one of these 3D printer kits, this video is for you. What's up you guys, welcome. I'm Travis, this is Shop Nation, and on today's episode, we're gonna to put together my new 3D printer. The specific printer that we're gonna be talking about today is the Prusa i3 Mark III S. You may know that I already own this exact same type of printer, and I'm adding a second one to my printer army. And I'm doing this simply because I found them to be really reliable and rock solid. So in today's video, I just wanted to share what goes into building one of these, if you do in fact buy the kit version, like I did. And I cannot overstate this. If you were gonna buy one of these printers, go with the kit version. It's cheaper, you see exactly how everything goes together, and it's just a lot of fun. If you grew up building Lego or Erector Set or Kinects or any of that kind of stuff, I'm telling you, you'll enjoy this. So before we actually build anything, let's first go through the package and show you what comes in the kit. So the first couple things you'll see is an instruction booklet and a 3D printing handbook. This instruction booklet is seriously impressive. This is the thing that stood out to me the most the first time I built one of these. It's just really well laid out, full color pictures, everything's very easy to understand. It's a relatively complex thing you're putting together, but they managed to make it very simple. So kudos to Prusa for sure. Next is the power supply. This was actually the first complaint from my original Prusa. They were using a different model power supply and I can tell that they've upgraded, so um, I'm hoping the performance will be better on this one as well. All right, so the first box, this represents what's called the Y-axis parts. There's some plates, really nice powder coating on these plates. This is the front and the back for the X and Y axis. Then you've got this sort of 80-20 extruded type aluminum pieces that make up the frame. This is another reason why I always recommend this printer over a lot of other sort of hobby grade printers is because the build components, I mean these are you know either laser cut or CNC aluminum, you've got aluminum extrusions um, and you'll see more and more components like that. So build quality of this printer is actually very good. All right, so these are all the plastic printed parts. So many of the components that actually hold this printer together are printed on other printers like this, which is slightly terrifying. But you can see, now I've taken these out of the bags. They actually come a lot more organized than this, but all the different components. Now these are all printed out of a material called PETG, which is a, a very strong and robust material. You don't really have to worry about it breaking or wearing down or becoming weak over time. Just really good quality stuff. The next box is all the fasteners and some of the electronic components. So a lot of zip ties. Um, you'll see zip ties used a lot in this build. Um, these are some of what kind of what the prepackaged components looks like. So here's some connectors for, this must be for the power supply, screws. Here's some pulleys and bearings. Again, everything's just really well packaged, put together. Here's the belt used for the carriage assembly. You've got the extruder gears, more fasteners. You've got a little tool kit. I think it's worth mentioning that you technically don't need any tools to build this. It comes with all the tools you need. So there's some Allen wrenches, needle nose pliers, and a Phillips screwdriver. Next, you get a complete uh, filament spool of PLA. PLA is a, a very common 3D printing material. In this case, they give you, uh, I got silver. I don't know if they're standard on all of their packages, but it's nice that you get a full roll of filament. And the most important part of this build, gummy bears. I don't know if this started as like an inside joke at Prusa or whatever, but every kit comes with gummy bears and they're actually included in the instruction manual. So they tell you when to eat them and you know, just kind of one of those things. You've got the LCD assembly. So although there is a lot of components to assemble, luckily circuit boards and things like that are, are done for you. You've got the extruder components. Now this has the hot end of the extruder itself. So it's got these heat fins. This is what actually imparts the energy to melt the plastic. Um, you've got a pin to probe, which they use for bed leveling, which is pretty cool. You'll see that at the end. You have the um, IR sensor for the filament. Got some more connectors. You've got both the part fan and the uh, heat sink fan. 
Then you've got more electronics. This is the brains of the printer. Um, this is the little circuit board that basically controls everything. So you can see some fuses. Here's where your power comes in. Again, everything is done for you. You don't actually need to solder on circuit boards or anything. They're all just push type connectors. So they make it pretty simple. And this box here, you've got a couple components. So you have the actual print bed itself and this has the embedded magnets as well as uh, basically the heating element so this is what creates the heat that's on your print bed um, it also comes with a magnetic print sheet which is one of my favorite features of this printer um, i chose to go with the textured sheet you can also get a plain sheet and then in here are some more um, aluminum components that i mentioned earlier so this is the xy carriage piece kind of a cool piece and then the main frame that makes up basically sits on the printer like this. All right, and now we got the motor kit. Now these are all stepper motors for all of your axes. So there are two for the Z axis, X axis, and one for the Y axis. So you can see again, they all come pre-wired. They're all labeled, really nice. And then lastly, you have the rods for the structure of the printer itself. So these are what these uh, roller bearings ride on. There's six of these rods in here. So they make up the various components in the printer itself. And you've got a sheath for the cords coming in and out of the control box itself. So that in a nutshell is uh, basically what comes in the box. So all that's left at this point is to open up the instruction manual, start at step one, crack open your gummy bears and get started. All right, so let's get started. Now you may be wondering, rightly so, why I'm building a 3D printer in a dungeon. That's right, this is the unfinished portion of my basement and as you can see right now it is basically a storage and staging area for all of our junk. This basement just happens to have all the criteria that I needed. It has a ton of space, has a ton of light, it's out of reach of a one-year-old, and is out of the way of the workers who are still completing the rest of our house. So bear with me, let's get started. Oh, my hair looks red. Oh my gosh, look how red that looks.
Well, there you go. Now for me, my total build time was about five and a half hours. I think the first time I did it, now keep in mind, I built one of these before. I think the first time I built one, it took me about seven to eight hours. So if that gives you any frame of reference. Now you also might be impressed and say, wow, Travis, you have a one-year-old. You did this whole video, this whole build in one day. That's pretty amazing. Well, that's not exactly the truth. You see, it actually took me four days. I just put on the same shirt each day to make you think that I did it in one day. YouTube magic. Now your next question may be, well, as a DIY, or woodworker, uh, what the hell would I use this thing for now? So you could print silly dumb things like this little triceratops skull that came with the printer. Or what I'm a bigger fan of is printing things that you can use around your shop, like this fenceless stop block, this radius gauge with interchangeable plates so you can get different radiuses, and even this simple little center finder for finding the center of round and square stock. So those are just a couple things that you can use this thing for, but seriously, it's endless. I just printed some custom adapters for a baby gate that we needed that didn't come with the baby gate, and lo and behold, a 3D printer can make it just fine. There are endless applications for this thing. If you wanna learn a little bit more about this specific printer and my specific opinion about it, I do have a video about that. I'd urge you to check that out if you're in the market or just generally curious about 3D printing. I'll also leave a link in the video description below of Prusa and where you can go to buy one of these things. Before we go, I wanna do a real quick subscriber update. It's kind of a big one. We are sitting at 100,271 subscribers. Yes. If you didn't hear, we got to 100,000 recently and it is so awesome and thank you so much. In the last video, I talked about a giveaway. That is still ongoing. I got a ton of really good selections. I'm gonna do a video separate about that as an update. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. I also sell those 3D printed tools as well as many more things on my Etsy store. That will be linked down below. Go check it out if you're interested. Until then, I will check you guys on the next project and as always, continue to pursue shop greatness.